Hey everyone, how you doing? It's Dan here and in this video I'm going to show you how you can buy ETH from Binance and transfer it to your MetaMask and to your ledger. So we're going to go from the bank to Binance to buy ETH to put it in the MetaMask and then to transfer it to the ledger. I want to buy some Ethereum today so I'm going to show you exactly how I do it and I'm actually going to go through and buy it so you can see all the steps and see what actually happens. And at the end of the video I'm going to show you one of the biggest and most frustrating issues I ever had with this when I first did it about a month ago. So right now we're on Binance which is an exchange and it's Binance.com and the first thing you want to do is actually register for an account. You just come up here and click on register where do you live? Australia. You can either register with email or with a mobile number. I did it with email because I do all of my buying with my desktop and it's just easier for me to check my email for confirmations rather than having to have my phone near me the whole time. As you're setting up the account, it's going to ask you if you want to set up two-factor authentication. And I highly recommend you do this because it's an extra added layer of security. It basically means if you ever want to buy anything, they send you an email to confirm it and you also have to enter an authenticated code which is from an app that you can get. The app is Google Authenticator. All you do is download that, you enter Binance. This is a screenshot of it now. And basically those numbers, they just slowly tick down over the space of like 10 seconds. And you've just got to enter that code to allow you to be able to make that transaction. If you want to turn on two-factor authentication, you can go to the little person thing and go to dashboard and it'll take you to this page and you just click on security here. And then you can see here Binance Google Authenticator recommended and you just turn that on. At the top, you also need to do an identity verification to basically prove that you're you. And the reason that you need to do this is because they're not actually going to let you trade anything until they've verified that it's you. All you need to do is just take a photo of your driver's license and then you actually hold up the app on the phone and it sort of looks at your face with the camera and it just verifies that your face is the same as your license. On the top hand side here, you can see your wallet. The wallet is the place where you have all your money and you can see fiat and spot. This shows you how much money and what crypto you have in your Binance wallet. And at the moment, you can see I have 500 bucks of Australian dollars and I have absolutely zero of everything else. So what I'm gonna do, is I've got a tiny little bit of money in my bank that I just wanna transfer into here as well. So what you want to do is go up here to buy crypto and then do bank deposit. And this is the only one that comes up with me. The only option is pay ID. So I click continue and I enter the amount, minimum of 50, that's okay. I just wanna do 50 and then you click continue. Just saying a few things, okay. Now what actually happens is it gives you your pay ID. Please use the pay ID detail below to make the transfer. So what you do is you go to your bank account, you select the email option and paste the email that they've given you. So let's go ahead and do that. So you click on this little thing to copy the email, copied successfully. And then you go to pay anyone. So what you do is you go to add new payee and click email address and then just paste that email address there. Because I've already done it, I don't need to do that. So I'm going from my account to the email address, $50, Ethereum, Ethereum, continue. Just check it all, confirm it all, that looks fine. Okay, payment submitted. So pretty much now that money should be in Binance. So I go back to Binance, go to wallet, fiat and spot. And you can see it's there, 550. So it's instantaneous, the money goes in straight away. That's because I've already done a few transactions. Your first transaction might take a day to go in, it might even take a couple of days, but once you've done one or two transactions, the money goes in straight away. So now we want to buy the crypto. So you come up to buy crypto, cash balance, buy crypto with your AUD balance. And see here 550, where you want to get Ethereum. And 550, 0 0.120 Ethereum, continue. See here, fees, 
no fees. That's really, really good. If you had a credit card, you'd be getting feed there. Confirm. So it's processing at the moment. And here we go, purchase complete. And you can see here, my AUD balance is down to zero and my Ethereum balance is that number. So now you have Ethereum in Binance. This is your Binance wallet, but you don't want it in this wallet. You want it in your MetaMask wallet. So what you need to do is you need to install a MetaMask. So you open a new tab, go to metamask.io, make sure it's the exact website and you're not going to a scam website. And here you are, and you just literally click download now. Um, install MetaMask for Chrome. And it's saying here, remove from Chrome because I already have it, but for you, it'd be install onto Chrome. And then you just do that. Once you've installed it, just click on this. If you can't see it in this little bar, just open like the little puzzle piece next to it. And you can see you need to pin it. So if you pin it, it will be there. And then you simply click on it and follow the instructions to set up your MetaMask. Some security advice for MetaMask is if you can use a completely different email that you don't use for anything else, or if you do use the same email, have a completely different password that you've never ever used before. Now we're back on Binance and we're gonna send the ETH to the ledger on the MetaMask. So this is my MetaMask account. You can see I already have a little bit of Ethereum on there. And if I switch to my ledger, I have no Ethereum, but I want to move it all to my ledger because a ledger is a cold wallet. It's 100% secure, whereas MetaMask is a hot wallet. And it's possible that if people get access to that wallet, then they're going to withdraw all my money. So in Binance, you click on withdraw. And here you need the ledger address. So you go to ledger, you click this little thing, copied. And then you paste the address in, select the network which will be Ethereum ERC20. For the amount, I'm just gonna hit maximum and transfer. So you can see here a 0 0.00623 ETH network fee is included. And this really, really sucks. There's nothing you can do about that. Ethereum is a network that has massive, massive fees. Withdraw. Just telling you, you know, to check, make sure it's a legitimate website. Ensure that the address is correct. So I'll just have a look at the first few and last numbers. Yep, that all looks fine. So this is the two-factor authentication. So I need to get my email verification code. Now I need to go to my phone to check Google Authenticator and add the code which is on there. And now submit. It says here it will take approximately 12 hours. It's, there's no way in hell it's gonna take that long. So you can see here, ETH, it's processing, it's confirmation zero of 12, maybe it'll take a minute, a couple of minutes. All right, I've just refreshed it again and you can see it's gone through, it took a couple of minutes. Let's go back to MetaMask and have a look. And you can see the amount of ETH I have in my ledger and it's actually gone up by $20 already. So that's nice, thank you, Ethereum. And that's basically it. So now it's secure in my ledger. Nobody has access to that except for me. So when I first did this about six or seven weeks ago, I had a massive, massive problem and I actually added days to the transaction. So please do not make, make this mistake as well. It was nothing to do with crypto. It was nothing to do with the fees. It was nothing to do with anything like that. The issue I had was with the banks. The bank I was using, it didn't actually have the option of putting in a pay ID, so putting in that email address. So I thought, hey, I'll just use my credit card instead. So I transferred money from my savings account to you know, my credit card account and was all ready to go. And then so I went to buy it and I had this massive, massive error message come up and it said, there is a problem with the source account, which means there's a problem with my bank account. And I just thought, oh God, have I got enough money or whatever it is. So I looked and I'm like, yeah, I've got enough money. And then I actually went to call the bank and I said, hey, I'm trying to do this transaction. It's not going through what's actually going on. And the person on the other end of the line said to me, sorry, Dan, with this bank, we don't allow you to buy crypto. And I just thought, oh, great. <laughs> 
what am I meant to do now? Like, and so I said to her on the phone, I said, look, you know, I've got all this money. I want to buy crypto. What am I meant to do? And she just basically repeated herself saying, I'm sorry, it's a policy at the bank that crypto is too risky a project. So we're not going to actually allow you to do this. The only option I had was to open another bank account. So that's actually what I did. I went to the trouble of opening an entirely new bank account, making sure that the bank would actually allow me to buy crypto. And then I transferred all the money over from the bank that wouldn't let me do it to the bank that would let me do it. And then I had to go through the, you know, the, the pay ID thing. And because it was in first transaction, that actually took a day or so to go through. So when I actually first wanted to buy my first bit of crypto, it actually took me about three days after that to actually be able to buy it. And it's because of my own fault, I should have checked that my bank would let me do this, but it didn't. So what I strongly recommend with you is if you do want to get into this, then first of all, let's get right back to the basics, right back to the ground foundation root level, level of it all. Will your bank actually let you buy crypto? If your bank won't let you buy cryptocurrency, then you've really got to consider you've got to join a bank that will let you actually buy it because that's the only way you're going to be able to do it. And my friends, I really hope you've enjoyed this video and it has been informative for you and you have actually been able to see the actual process of what you actually do to buy cryptocurrency. And until next time, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.